is that there's nobody in the gym at all. So I have a um, personal one-to-one -one fitness trainer that um, opens up the gym for me and we have exclusive um, use of the gym for the first hour. Coming to the gym for uh, ever, can you imagine how I would look if I didn't go to the gym? I mean, I'm hardly uh, a rake. Chest up, squeeze, Tri uh, tricep. <laughs> Kids have gone off to Tenerife with their grandparents this morning. Never been away for them for like more than a day. So the next eight days are going to be pretty quiet and they're really going to be office based pretty much most of the day. Um, I've got loads of admin to do today. It's Wednesday. I've got a couple of staff off. Um, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to get out of the office too much or not. So I've done my workout. I've been to the gym. I've started the day as I mean to go on. So loads of admin to do now. I'm going to try and record a YouTube video later with a little bit of content as well. Hi everyone. Good morning. Hope you're really well. Um, I haven't been alive in this group for quite a while. Um, it's great to see the community growing and great to see people sharing new ideas and what have you. So as always, I like to keep things real and transparent. And I always tell you whereabouts I am with my void situation in my own business. So at the end of December, we entered January with about four voids out of about, well, sellable rooms. You've probably All right, my briefcase, or call it what you like, man bag briefcase. I don't know what's in it. It's just ridiculous. I can't find a damn thing in it. What, what are your solutions? How do you store all of your stuff? Because this is getting ridiculous. Right, let's get to work. Another day. 8.35. Should be in the office for about quarter to nine. Or thereabouts. Like to be the first one in. Okay, so. My opening routine when we get to the office is pretty simple. Open the office and get a coffee routine. It's probably pretty boring. You know what, folks? I'd love some feedback if you find that these vlogs are interesting. Um, you know, let me know, because if they are, I'll keep doing them. So what do I do? I come in, first of all, get my computer out, set my three screens up. I've got one, two, and my computer over there. The first thing I'm going to do this morning is log onto our help desk. Um, we've got a help desk facility to make sure that there's nothing pressing that's coming overnight. Um, then I'll get into my emails, I'll answer my emails, and then today um, it's going to be a marketing day for our software, which is called GoTenant. So we've got reports that we've had a collapsed drain in one of our HMOs, and that's made one of the um, windows start to sag at the back of the property, so it's quite concerning. Um, the property is a five-bed HMO. Um, it's quite an old one. It's not one of our newer ones. So before we can do anything, we need to go out there and just do a site survey. I've not seen it yet. So you're going to be the first to witness it as well. Um, it could cause us a problem because there are five tenants living there and it might mean we have to dig up the kitchen. So let's get over there and let's have a look. Just leaving the office. I just wanted to show you those views. Can you see those views? That's the Malvern Hills. And on a day like today, it's absolutely stunning. It's not very nice when it's cold, but that kind of makes me feel a little bit grateful of living where we do and working where we do. Anyway, let's go. So, um, we're on the way to the property. We bought this property about, I don't know, six, maybe seven years ago. And it's from a, a lease option. It was one of the first lease options that we ever did. And we got it from an estate agent and the lease option fee was 500 pounds a month. That's all we were paying. Uh, so we got it at an absolute bargain. And I think it cost us like 10,000 pounds to do up from a normal house and we converted it into a five bedroom HMO. We could probably get six rooms from this, um, but we've never really looked into it, to be honest. We've never been motivated enough. Now, because we've had it like nearly seven years, it does need a little bit of a facelift. Um, you know, a lot's happened in seven years and the old Magnolia sort of um, painting and what have you that we used to get away with just doesn't cut it anymore. So this might be a good catalyst for us to 
um, start thinking about refurbishing the property and bringing it up to speed, maybe making a bit more money on it and maybe putting an extra bedroom in it as well. All the way down the side of the window here, which tells us that something is moving. So we're gonna go outside and see what's going on. So this is a problem when you get um, gardens in HMOs because I think, I don't know, about every six months or so, George, who's behind the camera, say hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> comes over here and just completely turns the garden over, gets rid of all the weeds. Now this is literally what, just a few months and already we've got weeds growing up really high. So again, it needs to be done, needs to be looked at. The garden. shed door's hanging off as well. So always something, always something to do. So this is, I don't even know why or how it's ended up hanging off, but it is. There we go. And that's all it takes. I suppose we have had a lot of wind recently, um, but it's just been blown open. And then we've got the back gate, which is wide open as well. This property, as I say, I mean, it's probably, it's ready for um, decorating. I think it's ready for renovating top to toe. It needs, um, it just needs a light, you know, light decorating, a bit of nice furniture um, and just a lick of paint really because I haven't really touched it for seven years. Um, but it just goes to show, you know, these properties are, are the lived in, um, you know, they are people's homes. Um, but sometimes not everything gets reported, so which is quite frustrating. Watch your head as you come through, watch your head. <laughs> Here, underneath this paving, very difficult to, uh, right, yeah, okay, so I you probably can't, you, you can't see it, but here there's a massive dip. So this is bowing. So there's a problem here, um, which tells me that something underneath is not right. It's not, um, I'm guessing that this is going to be, um, the drain's going to be collapsed underneath there, which is causing structural issues to this side of the property. And you can see from the outside, you've got cracks from the top to the bottom. So there's something going on. So it looks like we're going to have to get a surveyor over just to take up these tiles. And to see what's going on it's going to be an insurance job um, but that is quite serious you know obviously we've got movement we need to deal with it now uh, but it might be a good excuse for us to get into the property and get it renovated okay so we use these little timer stats and you can see in here it's got 17 minutes left to run it's currently at 19 degrees working perfectly so these count down from two hours and then they switch the heating off it's really good it's wedged open all the time, hence the name Fire Door, which is really frustrating. Okay. So this really annoys me, okay, you get this in HMOs, people just dump their stuff and think the bin men are going to take it. So now what I'm going to have to do is take this with me back to the car and get rid of it myself, because no one else is going to move it, which is really frustrating, again. And it's all in the day of the life of a HMO investor. That's recycling, that can sit nicely in there, and this is going to have to come back with me. I'm going to have to take it to the tip because nobody else is going to take it. This is what, you know, this is a problem with a lot of um, HMO landlords. They just let all this kind of stuff accrue and it just makes, you know, streets look really untidy. It doesn't take a lot of effort just to get it into the back of the car. It doesn't take a lot of effort for the tenants to be able to do it either, to be honest with you. But the problem being is that as soon as they know that they put it down there, and the magic fairy dustmen take it away, then they keep doing it. So it's a bit of a hamster wheel. You gonna walk us to the car? Yeah. And I'll take the camera. I'm going to have to find a place to, for, to put this lot now as well. Happens all the time. Fridges, wardrobes, suitcases, televisions, tables, absolutely everything, you name it. I mean, you know, look at them snails on there. Look at loads of snails in the car now. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> this, is, this is the real side of being in property. It's not all about driving Ferraris and living on caviar. And I'm going to have to knock them off, look. Don't, don't hate me, snail lovers. Don't hate me. I'm not putting them in the car because otherwise they'll have bloody snails everywhere. I think half of them are dead anyway. Hi. 
There you go. Nice little bit of a back of a chair there if anybody wants one. Okay. This is actually quite tidy for us, this car. You can actually almost fit someone in the back of it. It's not normally like that. Right, back to the office then. Inside the property, uh, there were tenants in there. Um, there was somebody in the kitchen, someone in the living room, and there was one person upstairs as well. So just out of courtesy, um, I thought it was best not to record inside the house. What I need to do now is have a meeting with the team and just discuss a way forward with the drains. Probably what we'll do now is get a site survey, get a drain specialist over and get a surveyor to come out and have a look. If it is collapsed drains, which I very strongly suspect that it is, um, we'll have to get the insurance company involved, which then may mean um, evicting the tenants, if it does mean digging down underneath the kitchen, because that back part is the kitchen. So, not ideal, but it will be a great opportunity for us to be able to refurbish the property and bring it up to today's standards, and it's a little bit short of that at the moment. So thank you for watching on my YouTube channel and like always sharing the good and the bad with property investing and everything in between. If you're enjoying these vlogs or any of my other content, I'd love you to subscribe. Just click that subscribe button below. So I'm going to go now, folks. Until the next one, take care. Have a great day.